Good afternoon, YouTubers. It's Sunday today. It's Sunday the the tenth, the tenth of March, twenty twenty four. And in the news today, we have seen the um, well, there's things we haven't seen. There's uh, <laughs> apparently Buckingham Palace got ram raided last night. Um, someone crashed a vehicle into the gates, and uh, I've been to Buckingham Palace. Okay, I've been there. And I've seen that right behind those gates have got these huge hydraulic rams that lift right up out of the concrete. So anyone crashing through those gates will come to an abrupt halt. Even if you're driving a huge lorry or something like that. I mean, these things will stop. Um, an armoured vehicle, I would imagine, they look pretty substantial to me. And, uh, and then people will emerge from... Uh, wherever and, and shoot you you know if you if you <laughs> anyway i don't know what happened someone crashed the vehicle at two o'clock in the morning into these gates fractured the gates and um the police swarmed out and arrested them i don't know any further than that because there's nothing on the uk media there's nothing on sky news there's nothing um fiona read about it in the daily mail so there you go get the news first from the daily mail enough about that the other thing in the news today was the um, bluebird bluebird donald campbell's t what was it t7 was it just wash my hair so it's all it's all misty the bluebird the the actual high-speed boat that donald campbell tried to break his own record with at coniston water in 1967 has finally finally returned to the museum at coniston I say returned, it's never been there, has it? It's, uh, that was the agreement all along. So it was big news, it's there, finally. Because this museum raised over a million pounds to um, build this extension, the, the Bluebird extension on their museum. The museum's been there since 1901, I think, something like that. And uh, going back to 19... Oh, when was it? I don't know, long time ago, 34 years after 1967 anyway, divers discovered the wreck because Campbell was killed. His boat took off, the, the front came up. He was doing about 300 miles an hour and the front came up and it flipped over. <whistles> Boom, and that was it, it sank. And uh, his body, Donald Campbell's body was not recovered. Okay, it sank. Now they couldn't find the boat either. Anyway, anyway, years and years later, 34 years later, the boat's recovered. It's found, it's recovered. Donald Campbell's body was found with the boat and that was buried in the local cemetery in, um, in near Coniston somewhere. And uh, anyway, cut a long story short, the people that own the boat, because the boat still has an, o an owner, even though it's on the bottom, it's been there for years, the people who owned the boat donated it to the Ruskin Museum, said there, you can have it. So obviously there's a lot of expense and volunteers and things involved because it was all a big famous thing. Anthony Hopkins made a film about it in 1988 called Across the Water. You can look that one up. It's a true story of, and it actually shows the real crash at the end. And uh, you can just Google Donald Campbell and uh, Bluebird Coniston Water, which is in the Lake District. And um, I remember it. I, I was only a child at the time. I was born in 61. So in 67, I'd be about six years old. And I can remember my dad going on and on about it. And uh, so I do remember it. I remember it well. I don't remember Malcolm Campbell. That, well, I think that was his father. He got killed as well, trying to beat some record, I think. But I do remember Donald Campbell. Donald Campbell was the son, wasn't he? And he, he died in the crash. Anyway, cut long story short, they recovered the boat from the water. The, the owners had donated it to the Ruskin Museum in Coniston, so it is their property. Now, an agreement was made this, 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 with this guy, I've got his name here, and I saw the documentary, I saw the documentary, Bill Smith and the Bluebird Project. Right, well, Bill Smith, I saw the documentary about this, and this guy worked... Um, tremendously, tremendous. Did put a tremendous amount of effort in. They recovered the diver. He recovered the boat, the body. They recovered everything, and they signed an agreement that they would restore the boat. 
and when it was restored, they'd give it back to the museum. That was the deal, so I'm led to believe. Anyway, I watched the documentary about it. It was, oh, a good five years ago now. And they actually got it in running order, and they put it on a truck. They took it to, not to Coniston, to somewhere in Scotland near the Isle of Bute. And they, they test drove it. They, they rode it on the lake. They actually fired it up, and I said, whoa, that's well dodgy. Don't be doing that. No, 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 no. But they limited it to about 150 miles an hour. I thought, this is the actual death trap that killed Donald Campbell, right? It was a, such a bad design of boat. I mean, back in the day, they just put jet engines in everything and just took off. And don't forget, Donald Campbell's body was in the boat for 34 years on the bottom of Lake Coniston. So there's no way I'd get in it. I won't, no way I'd even sit in it, never mind driving it at 100 miles an hour on some lock somewhere. No. Anyway. They roared up and down. I thought, oh, that's a bad idea. That's a bad idea. Anyway, they put it back on the on the trailer, took it back to Hull. But I think that the guy's based in Hull. But to be fair to the guy, you know, he has put in thousands and thousands of hours in his own money. And he's got volunteers and they've done a fantastic job restoring this, this thing, this boat, which is an iconic piece of British history, for sure. For sure. And uh, then something they fell out with the museum. And they decided to keep the boat. Well, I think that's the gist of it. And uh, the museum was arguing. It finished up, the museum had to take them to court. Big legal process. I think that was 2023. And they've just had the court ruling. Yes, you must give the boat back to the museum. So they've gone down. They've got the boat. Put it on the trailer. They've taken it. It's finally, finally arrived in the museum. And... Uh, it's a great shame that Bill Smith and the Ruskin Museum fell out because the guy, the guy, give credit where it's due, he did a fantastic job, for sure. And it is a great shame that people can't... Because um, I think the original plan was it was going to be in the museum for most of the year, and in the summer, this guy, uh, Bill Smith, was going to be allowed to run it up and down the lake at Coniston, which I personally think is a huge mistake. But that's just my opinion. I mean, you, you might think differently. Um, but that's all That's all gone to pot now. Um, maybe they have plans to run it on the lake. I don't know. But personally, my own personal feelings are that it's in the museum. It should stay there. Really, it should stay there because it's too valuable to risk crashing it. It's too valuable to risk killing someone in it. And it is a piece of iconic history and it should just stay in a museum where people can come and see it and enjoy it. We've seen video footage of it on the lake in, in Scotland and uh, there's no reason that it should go back out and I'll tell you why I think it's a really really bad design okay it's a death trap and that is because even though it's a boat I mean the whole purpose of it was to break uh, the, the boat speed record this is going back to the 1960s so no one no one had access to jet engines unless you were really rich you know, so Campbell obviously had a few bob about him, or he already had sponsors and things, and I, I believe he had an E-type Jaguar in the film. So only rich people had them in the 60s. I can tell you my dad drove a little Morris 1100, remember them? And uh, they just wanted to thunder along at great speed and, uh, and break records and be, be champions because people do that sort of thing they all want to be the fastest and the best at whatever they do it's natural competition you get between people you know, this is what f1 racing is all about horse racing they all want to be first they want to be the fastest they want to be the best and you can't knock him for that because that's what he wanted to do and you know he had the money and he did it but there wasn't a lot of thought went into it the design i don't think because what you've actually got is an aeroplane engine in a boat, right, and you're going to thunder along the water, and all you've got to control it is the steering wheel, which is connected to a little tiny rudder, which is in the water. And don't forget, even though it is a boat and it is floating, it's thundering along at 300 miles an hour, so most of the boat is actually flying through the air, not the water, right? And it's got this tiny little rudder at the back. And what happened is the wind got under the front of the boat 
So it, it literally went up in the air, flipped over a few times, and wallop, and that was it. It just broke apart, destroyed, and Campbell was killed. Now, as a pilot, I'm thinking to myself, well, it should have had control services. It shouldn't have had a little stupid water rudder. It must have had one as well. But you will have had to have had um, aircraft controls. So you, you've, got, you've got pitch control as you're going through the air. So, you know, that, that nose comes up, you can correct it, you can, you can push it back down again. It would have to have stabilisers like ailerons. Only small ones, it doesn't have to be, you don't want it to go flying, you just want it to have control over the craft as it's thundering along. And of course, you've got an air rudder as well as a water rudder. So you'd have all three of those, your pitch and roll. Okay, so if you've got that, you can open that throttle as wide as you want and you can go as fast as you want. And they could say, the judges could say, well, it's an aircraft. Well, it's not. It's a boat. It's never designed to fly, but it is designed to be controlled through the air because the air is the one medium that you are thundering through, you're travelling through, really not the water. So you have to have air controls to, to achieve these great speeds. Now, all right, if he hit a bit of a wave, a bit of a ripple, and he bounced and he went into the air, He's got control of it, he can throttle back, he can stabilise it and he can bring it back down and it'll skid along on the water again. And they could say, well, no, no, you left the water, you went flying, so we're disqualifying that run. So you've got to go and do it all again. So the, the, the pilot has got to keep the boat on the water at the speed that he's trying to break the record of whatever. So that's, that's why I think that the, the Bluebird was a bad design because it had no... Uh, air control, no stabilizers, nothing, no pitch control, no yaw, no roll, nothing. All it had was one little silly air rudder. So the moment that nose goes up, you've had it. There's nothing you can do. You've got no control over it at all. And that's where it it failed. And it killed Donald Campbell, and it, I think it would kill someone else who tried to um, beat Campbell's record in it. And it's only a matter of time. If you, if you take it out, and you say, right, the limit's 150 miles an hour on Coniston Water, and they're, they're there. I mean, imagine they, they, they make up with Bill Smith again, and they all, they all kiss and make up, and everyone's friends again. And they take it up to 150, they'll make a documentary about it, they'll be all be cheering and clapping, and isn't it marvellous? And they'll be put it back in the museum again for the rest of the year. It's a matter of time, isn't it, before someone says, well, let's try and go a bit faster. And you see what's going to happen, don't you? eventually someone is going to get killed again and we're going to lose the boat for the second time. So that's why I believe it should stay in the museum. What do you think? What are your thoughts and opinions on the Bluebird? Do you think what I am saying about control surfaces has any credence or do you think I'm just an idiot? <laughs> Please leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.